The pediatric patient was received in the operation theater and gently transferred onto the operating table in the supine position with proper safety measures. Standard monitors were applied, including ECG leads, pulse oximeter, non-invasive blood pressure cuff, and temperature probe to record baseline vitals. An intravenous cannula was secured and four fluids were started as per anesthetist orders. The anesthesia machine and suction apparatus were checked for proper functioning before induction. Preoxygenation was carried out with face mask and general anesthesia was induced under the supervision of the anesthetist. Airway was secured with an endotracheal tube and correct tube placement was confirmed by bilateral chest auscultation and capnography. The patient was then connected to the ventilator and anesthesia maintenance was continued. Once the patient was fully stabilized, all aseptic precautions were observed. The surgical site was shaved if required, cleaned thoroughly with antiseptic solution, and draped with sterile sheets. The surgical instruments and necessary equipment were arranged on the trolley. The surgical team completed the safety and preoperative checklist, confirming the patient's identity, procedure, and consent. After final confirmation, the surgeon marked the incision site, and the surgery was officially started under sterile conditions. At the time of the procedure, the pediatric patient was transferred to the operating table and positioned supine. Standard monitors, including pulse oximetry, non-invasive blood pressure, and ECG, were attached to ensure continuous observation of vital parameters. Intravenous 4. Access was secured, and baseline vitals were noted. For induction of anesthesia, propofol was administered intravenously in the appropriate calculated pediatric dose. Once loss of consciousness was achieved, the patient was ventilated with 100% oxygen via face mask. Following this, a muscle relaxant atricurium was given to facilitate smooth intubation, along with the required premedication drugs, as per the anesthesia plan. Adequate time was allowed for the onset of action, and proper mask ventilation was confirmed. After ensuring adequate depth of anesthesia and muscle relaxation, direct laryngoscopy was performed using a laryngoscope. The vocal cords were visualized clearly. Under direct vision, an appropriately sized endotracheal tube was gently inserted through the vocal cords into the trachea. Tube placement was immediately confirmed by bilateral chest auscultation observation of chest rise, and the presence of end-tidal CO2 on the monitor. Once correct positioning of the endotracheal tube was assured, the tube was secured firmly with adhesive strapping slash taping to prevent accidental dislodgement during the surgical procedure. The patient was then connected to the anesthesia circuit, and mechanical ventilation was initiated. Oxygen saturation, heart rate, blood pressure, and other parameters were continuously monitored throughout the process to ensure patient safety and stability. After the airway was secured and anesthesia was maintained, the patient's abdomen was prepared and draped under aseptic conditions. A lower abdominal incision was made to gain entry into the peritoneal cavity. On exploration, a large cystic mass was identified arising from the abdominal cavity. The cyst was carefully dissected from the surrounding tissues with meticulous attention to avoid rupture or injury to adjacent structures. Once mobilized completely, the cyst was excised and removed from the abdominal cavity in toto. Following this, further inspection of the abdominal organs revealed an inflamed appendix. Standard appendectomy was performed. The mesoappendix was carefully ligated, the base of the appendix was secured with ligature, and the appendix was excised. Hemostasis was ensured throughout the procedure. After confirming that there was